This is Degaris MPC, Math, Physics, Computing, 130 plus master's level and PhD level courses, um, pure mathematics <coughs> and mathematical physics. Uh, this is course number four on, so MPC four on linear algebra. This is the first session of lecture two, so chapter two, uh, one chapter, one course, uh, one lecture, one chapter, one chapter, one lecture. This is the first of uh, chapter two, lecture two. And the theme is, uh, for, le for lecture two is linear, linear equations. Uh, perhaps I should say uh, it's a pure ma the so course number four is a pure mathematics course. It's at junior and senior level. The author of the text is Lipschutz. Uh, just a minute. I I usually do this for the beginning of each uh, each chapter, each lecture, the beginning of each lecture, but not the beginning of each session because it gets a bit tedious. Here. Here's the text that I'm using. So it's by Lipsch Lipschutz, called Linear Algebra. It's in the, it's in the, sh I don't know if you can see that. It's in the Schaum series of textbooks, uh, usually undergrad level. Uh, so that's the text I'm using. <coughs> All right. So linear equations. Firstly, what is a linear equation? Well, here's, here's an example of one. So uh, you have these uh, unknowns or variables, uh, x, so x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. Uh, if you're, in, say, in two dimensions, instead of saying x1, x2, you, you probably say x and y. Or three dimensions, you might say x1, x2, x3 would be x, y, z. But in general, uh, in when you're talking about uh, an n-dimensional space, uh, you'll have n of these unknowns, these variables, if you like, so x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. So here, here's an example of a linear equation. And, and what's linear about? What, what is it about this equation that makes it linear? Well, the answer is the powers here of these unknowns, they're all one. And that, by definition, is what's meant by a linear equation. But, uh, here, here's an example of a non-linear equation. So here the powers are not one. You see you've got like x squared and y cubed and, and so forth. So that, that's an equation, that, that's an example of an, an equation that is uh, non-linear. Okay? But for this chapter <coughs> we're going to be dealing with uh, equations that are of this form where all the powers here of these unknowns, they're all ones. Okay, that's a linear equation, uh, and the word linear <coughs> is the adjective of the word line. So, for example, if uh, if you just had uh, two two variables, x say x one, x two, or x and y, that would be uh, the equation of a line. You see. So, by analogy. Uh, that's that's where the, the label came from, and then it just gets generalized. So instead, of, if you have not just two unknowns or two variables here, x one and x two, uh, if you have n of them, uh, you still you still call that type of an equation a linear equation. All right. Now, say you have several of them, or uh, then uh, a set of them. So you, say you had a set of of equations, linear equations like this. Then, in, uh, for this chapter, <coughs> and uh, in linear algebra in general, often that set of linear equations, uh, instead of using the word set, you tend to use the word system. Uh, I guess that comes from engineering. Um, so, when, when in this context of linear equations, if you hear the term system of linear equations, just, just read for that set. Right? The, the, these, these two words, same meaning. So a system of linear equations means you just have a set, so several, yeah, more than one, uh, linear equation. All right. Now, by studying these, this system of linear equations, 
you, you, we will develop techniques on how to solve these equations, in other words, find actual numbers for these unknowns that satisfy the equation. So you plug in uh, actual numbers for these x's, and the left-hand side will then equal the right-hand side. So that, that, that's what's meant by solving the equation, in other words, finding values for these x's. So uh, now you'd have, n, in general, you'll have n of them, n of these numbers, and that forms an n tuple. And if you plug in the um, what's the word? components of that n tuple into here and here and here and so on, and if the left hand side equals the right hand side, then that n tuple is said to be a solution of this equation. Okay, that, that's important, what I've just said. It's an uh, important definition. So that n-tuple is, is a solution of this equation. Now, uh, the, we'll, we will develop... So if you, have, if you have a lot of these equations, uh, that allows you to solve for these, these x's. And we'll develop, in the course of this chapter, we will develop techniques on how to do that. Uh, in other words, how to solve for, for these unknowns. And once that becomes familiar, you... Uh, oh, and by the way, keeping it simple to start with, we will assume that these, these uh, numbers here, these A's, uh, they tend to be called uh, coefficients. Where, where, where is that? Here. Yeah, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. These, these A's are tend to be called the coefficients of these X's, and the X's themselves, uh, they tend to be called... Uh, <coughs> uh, indeterminants. You know, they, they haven't been determined yet. You, they're, they're, in a sense, uh, unknowns. You don't, you don't know what their values are yet. So uh, here, here are at least three different labels for the same thing. They're all synonymous. They're all uh, have the same meaning. So uh, indeterminate, you don't know what they are. They're not, you haven't determined what their values are yet. Or unknowns or variables. <coughs> okay, so these, these x's, uh, I tend not to use the term indeterminate. For one, it's many, indeterminant, that's five syllables. That's a bit of a mouthful. So I usually just use uh, variables. Um, <clears throat> okay. So uh, once once we've developed uh, these techniques, uh, those very similar techniques carry over to the case where these coefficients, the a's, and the variables or the unknowns of the the x's, are complex numbers. So they they belong to C. But for the moment, we'll just uh, Keep it simple, simpler, by dealing only with real numbers. So the, the a's and the x's, so the coefficients and the unknowns, so the a's and the x's, uh, belong to R. They're, they're real numbers. All right. Uh, and then, uh, so once we've developed techniques for solving for x uh, in uh, reals and complexes, the reals and the complexes, so R and C then uh, we will abstract, uh, we'll go into a more abstract uh, approach, uh, which is more uh, you know, high level, more abstract, and you know, well into senior level, We're no longer in junior level, and even verging on M1, so first year masters to, to some extent. All right? <coughs> Okay, so uh, summarizing a bit, that's the general form of a linear equation because the powers here for the unknowns, the x's, are all one. Uh, these a's are called the coefficients, the x's are called uh, uh, unknowns or variables or indeterminants. Um, this, this number here is just usually called the constant because you know, it's fixed of the equation. Uh, sometimes uh, B will be zero. That's, that's, that can happen. So uh, you can rewrite this in a shorter form, just here, because what are you doing? So the general form of this would be I here. So you're just summing. You're summing these terms A I X I here. A I X I. Um, 
uh, over n terms in, in n dimensions. So you have sigma ai, uh, well say you had an x here, xi uh, equals b. So b should, this is your, the constant of your equation and this is the left hand side of your equation. Uh, now, um, if, if you have a solution to this equation, what does that mean? It means you have an n-tuple uh, of the x's, actual values. Um, so, uh, so say that n-tuple is k1, k2, dot, 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 kn. And you plug in those numbers, these constants now, these numbers, into here, here, and here. So the, the, uh, the ith x, so xi, would, uh, it, it gets substituted for ki. So you, you plug in these concrete numbers in, into these x's, and if the left-hand side equals b, equals the constant of the equation, equals b, that n-tuple, you know, all these k's, that is said to be a solution of this equation. So the, the n-tuple of the k's is a solution to this equation. <coughs> now, if you have a system of equations, you know, a set of them, several, you know, several of them, uh, you often, well, often that will allow you to solve the the set of equations. And what does that mean? It means that you 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 can actually find the actual values of these unknowns, and and will develop a, a lot of techniques on how to do that. That's uh, you know there's a lot of work involved, and that's that's what um, uh, uh, lecture two is about, and and other other lectures, other chapters in the book. It's, it's, uh, it, it's one of the core activities uh, of uh, linear algebra. I mean, it's, you know, a, a big part of linear algebra is uh, techniques on how to solve a system of linear equations. Right? And it's, it's the motivator where like uh, matrices and determinants and all, all that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, th th that, that will come later in the course. So uh, and that, what I'm trying to say is that solving the values of these x's, these unknowns, when you have a system of, in other words, a set of uh, linear equations like this, is a big part of linear algebra. Okay? That's, uh, an essential point. <coughs> right, have I left, left anything else? Uh, so if you if you have an n-tuple of k's, you know, actual numbers, uh, where k1 is, a, is uh, a number for x1, and k2 is a number here for x2 and so on, that n-tuple <coughs> is said to satisfy the equation. In other words, it, it is a solution of so in other words, if you see this word satisfy, just reread it as is a solution of this equation. Okay? And, and I'll, you know, I'll say, well, this n-tuple satisfies this equation. You'll probably hear me say that you know, quite a few times. And, and the solution of, it's an n-tuple, right? Because you have, you'll have n of these, because you, you have an n-dimensional uh, equation here, you have, meaning you have n of these x's, and similarly, you'll have n of these coefficients. These 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 a's here are called the coefficients. The x, <coughs> the x's are called the unknowns or the variables. Right? I'll stop there. <coughs>